Hello everybody, let's look at another example of the application of those formulas. So we have sine of cosine inverse of 3 fifth plus sine inverse of 7 over th uh, 25. Uh, we realize that cosine inverse of a ratio will always give us an angle. So let's call this part alpha. Let's call this part beta. I can treat this as saying that cosine inverse of 3 over 5 is equal to alpha. Therefore, cosine of alpha will be 3 over 5. The corresponding triangle for this looks as follows. If this was alpha, the adjacent is 3, the hypotenuse is 5, and the other leg must be 4. It's a 3 for 5 triangle. Sine inverse of 7 over 25 tells us that sine inverse of 7 over 25 equals beta, and so sine of beta equals 7 over 25. The corresponding triangle for this looks like this. The opposite is 7, the hypotenuse is 25, and if you know your pi back triples, this third length is 24. I want a sine of alpha plus beta. Well, I know that this is angle addition, so this will be sine of alpha cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha sine of beta. Sine of alpha will be 4 over 5. Cosine of beta will be 24 over 25. Plus cosine of alpha is 3 over 5 times sine of beta is 7 over 25. Evaluate everything here. The denominator will be 125. 4 times 24 is 96. 96 plus 21 is... 117. And so this is our final answer. Now, this question could have gotten a twist to it if one of these were negatives. So if we had a cosine of a negative ratio or sine of a negative ratio, we have to be a bit more careful and label our side lengths with the right, uh, with the right plus or minus sign accordingly.